Where do we stand with the industry for today? Oh, we're confronted with this question quite a lot. And I think it's the right time to ask the question. I mean, if you look back, Industry 4.0, the term is around since 2011. I think the first publications came out 2013. So we're seven years into the game. And you could expect that we see the full impact of Industry 4.0 right now. That is only partially true. If you look at Industry 4.0, a lot of things have happened. In particular, in the area of standardization, we made great progress. Technology-wise, I think there is a complete family of new technologies there. Um, so in that sense, I think there, every, all the ingredients for Industry 4.0 are available. If you look at how many companies are really kind of living and breathing Industry 4.0, you can say that the big ones, uh, like in Factory 56, for example, or if you look at SEW Eurodrive, I mean, you, you, there are companies who are really taking this forward. We at Festo are using it in, in our factories, but I wouldn't say that in general, the broad economy, especially the smaller companies, have adopted uh, the industry for it all, really. And, and what there, there is technology, but there is still a significant hurdle and that hurdle mostly is the skills. So in general, if you ask me, where are we? We are not yet at the breakthrough because we need a lot of people out there who can start experimenting with new skills, new technologies, and play with new business models, new business processes, because that's what we haven't really seen in a broad scale yet, new business models and manufacturing occurring. But that shouldn't be a too sober and too negative assessment. I think that's what was expected. We made great progress, but the skill gap is what keeps us back. When we're looking at what keeps us from kind of really getting the full productivity gain from industry for the home, and that's actually a very unfortunate and tough time to assess this because with COVID-19 and the pandemic, I think we're in a special situation. If we look for at the, at the situation before, I think the, the job market was extremely close. All companies were kind of fully active, the books were full, so it was really hard to take the time and start training people and take them off their productive work to get them into a training program that provides new skills. Because, as I said earlier, skill is the limiting factor. It's not about technology. Only people experimenting, trying out new things will lead to new emerging business models and technologies. Now, I think this makes COVID on the one hand side a challenge and an opportunity. On the one hand side, people are really kind of now looking very closely. Where do we continue investing? Where do we stop investing? Because cost pressure is around. And that might lead in few cases that people are stopping innovation because it's not really paying back yet. We think that this is something that sh people should ideally not do. I think this is the right time to invest in the staff and use the fact that a lot of companies are working in short labor to train people and give them the opportunity to use the curricula that are out there. Now we've seen out there in the market a, a, a interesting situation. The, if you look at in, in Germany, uh, the training programs, the formal training programs for first-time education have been updated in a very quick way. So we know what are those skills that are needed for Industry 4.0 for digital transformation. They are already in the new curricula. However, I think the people who are coming fresh from school or university will not create kind of because they're relatively few, the big impact on the shop floor. So now we need to train the people who are professionals, who are working on their job and help them to upgrade because they have not had the opportunity to learn the new things yet. And that's, I think, the, the second thing. We need to start investing in topics like cybersecurity. We need to help people understand what are the IT infrastructure needed for big data that can help us to transform processes. We need to work with people on robotics, robotics programming. There's a lot of new technologies around that we know 
and understand quite well. And I think the important thing is to provide the right form of training for professionals. Now, what we know is that professionals have a different way of learning. I mean, if you go to vocational school, it's clear you start on the Monday morning, you have a couple of days school there, it's a classical program. Professionals only have an hour here, an hour there, in between two jobs. If the line is down, they can learn a little. On their way home on the bus, they can look and learn. So we need to have a very different way of slicing and cutting and providing the same type of knowledge uh, to professionals. And that's, I think, one of the other big challenges, that the way professionals learn and become acquainted uh, with Industry 4.0 it needs to be a different way than we did it traditionally in schools. And this gets us to a different point. I mean, how does digitization affect us at Festo Didactic? Uh, and how does digitization affect learning? If you look at Festo Didactic, we are a bit of a hybrid. On the one hand side, we are a machine builder. We are building learning machines, if you want, learning solutions which are mostly hardware based. So we take that technology that makes industry for the dough up in the, in the factory and create smaller type of learning models that we provide to schools or learning academies at, at companies. So we are hardware providers. So all the things that apply to digital transformation uh, in manufacturing companies apply to us. We need to rethink about how can we quickly, quickly iteratively use agile methodologies, design thinking to develop new solutions. We know the technology is changing so quickly that we adopt it, we create a learning solution, and by the time we have that learning solution ready, the technology has already proven to be the wrong technology and a new technology is coming in. So we're under the same kind of stress, if you want, like normal manufacturing companies to adapt new technologies and bring them out to students. On the other hand, I think digitization is not just a content topic. It's not just that the learning itself changes in the way that what we teach is different. The way how we teach has become fundamentally different. All our trainers who used to go out to customers and give courses at customers can't travel anymore. So within a month, we had to switch to hybrid learning situations where we do virtual learning, where we use our digital platform that we launched this year, Festo Learning Experience, and basically take the course we're there, get it in small digital chunks that people can consume it in an asynchronous way, and then come together in Zoom or team meetings, ask questions. So topics like flipped classroom have, be, have become suddenly themes that have not been around. So digitization for us also means a significant change in the way how you learn. And those two changes in parallel have been a positive challenge and what you see is that digital transformation is a big change but on the other hand it gives a lot of new inspiration to people in a company because you're part of a new story. So in that sense for us I think COVID was a challenge like for everyone else but on the other hand, it was an opportunity because people started to understand digital immediately. And that, I think, is a good thing. Nevertheless, we have to say that a lot of companies are still overwhelmed by the fact that now they need to basically provide training and education for their employees who are now for the first time working at home. So we will continue to see a significant need for investments in digital training uh, for the manufacturing industry. So that gets me to the last question. I mean, what can we from Festo Didactic do to work with our customers, with the industry, to help creating that change? I mean, at Festo, we've always been leaders in taking the latest technology and making it easy for students and professionals to understand, to grasp it. And as technical education is not something that you learn purely from the textbooks, we've always managed to provide very comprehensive, interesting learning environments where you can learn things in the area of industry for it all. But it also spans over into the areas of applied IT, how does digitization affect the shop floor. But it even goes farther into electrical engineering. And those topics 
we have taken and basically formed a modular set of learning solutions that allow students at vocational schools, but at the same time professionals, be it a technician or an engineer, to basically in a very pragmatic way apply the new technology in a secure environment. Because what you cannot do in a factory is let people play around with technology which is in full swing producing goods. You basically need to take the real-time components and put them to the sideline, create a model that is similar enough but still generic to learn that, those things. And that's what we're doing. So our purpose right now is to provide a stimulating, interesting, state-of-the-art technology environment combined with the latest digital trends. Ways how you learn about the digital twin, how you work with uh, big data infrastructures in the context of manufacturing. And I think we, we managed in a very short amount of time to create an extremely comprehensive industry for the low curriculum that basically gives you all that you need and all that your teams need to understand what it requires to do industry for the low. And that is not just valid for vocational schools where we are most visible because most of the mechatronic students in the world have touched Festo. But we can also provide the same thing in a very different, more modular form through a digital learning experience to companies for their continuing education. And we see a lot of our customers, enterprise companies, who have our equipment for their education programs, sending people from the shop floor into their education programs because there is right now the, the, the time for that. And so first time in continuing education comes together and based on our offering, we see a lot of stimulating discussions about the future of skills and where those job profiles goes. And that's something that's the last thing we're currently doing. We're changing our training and consulting business in becoming more a sparring partner in terms of educational consulting and help companies to redefine their skill sets. And that's what we're, for example, doing with our mother company, with the Fester Group, where we're working in the area of mechanical engineering or team leads on the shop floor to look at how will their job profiles evolve, what's their future and how can we provide the skills to them actually leveraging our own training facilities. So it's a very interesting time for us and we're happy to contribute to the transformation. Thank you.